hey, check me out. I got more slides on my fingers than Tim Lohman has turquoise on his hand. Speaking of Tim Lohman, the music today is low volts. That's Tim Lohman. And the album is Oh My Stars. Oh My Stars. So, what is the most important part about a slide? Are you thinking, well, it might be metal, it might be glass, it might be wood, it might be the length of it, it might be the width of it. No, those are things all come after what I'm talking about. <laughs> and that's the most important thing about having a slide is having a finger to put it on. What am I talking about? Well, um, you know, I used to work the oil field. That's why I got my oil field worm Pruitt oil tools hat. I've had this for a long time. They sell drill bits and other stuff nobody would know about except us oil field people. But an oil field worm means you're in the oil field and you don't know what's going on and it's dangerous. You're like to get killed. Now, back in my oil field days, we used to throw chain. It's called throwing chain. I'm going to give you a, a, a link right up there. You need to watch this. This is the craziest stuff you've ever seen. The guy's throwing a chain around pipe. If he lets go of the end of it, it comes around and hits everybody. If he gets your fingers in there, I'll just pop your finger off like a, like a tree limb out of loppers or something. So anyway, this episode is called How to Keep Your Fingers. And what are we doing? Well... Let me get turned around here. I'm not prepared. We're still working on a couple of these Mississippi Picnic Festival guitars. And it's come time to put the nut right up here. But you can see this nut is too wide and it's too tall. So we're going to cut this. But I'll tell you what. You start messing around a, a band saw or something. I mean, you could cut this with a hand saw and a file and all that stuff. And I mean, my social security check could get here before you got it done. But there's a way to do this on a bandsaw. I'm going to make a little jig here and show you how to do it and not look like you've been throwing chain in the Texas oil field. So let's get set up and I'll show you how to do this. So quick and easy thing and I'm going to save your fingers. Yeah, you're welcome. Now let's go to work. Hey, forgot a couple of things. I haven't done this to you in a while. You, you need to make sure you give me a like. You should have done that already so I can see that you're watching and you're paying attention. Now, you're going to be glad you're paying attention because speaking of slides, I got, I got a question for you. And the first person that sends me an email in the continental United States, we already talked about the Russia thing and China and all that. We're not doing all that. I'm not paying uh, half a house payment to make sure you get something that's worth literally a dollar. It might be worth more now. But anyway, there's going to be a little contest here. And it has something to do with slides. It has something to do with one of the blues pioneer playing slide going back in the 20s. I'm already telling you too much. I'm not going to give you this for free. You need to do some brain work on your own. Don't be a worm. But there was somebody that used a royal crown bottle, a neck off a royal crown bottle for a slide. You tell me who that was. That means their first real name their nickname and their last name and you'd be the first one to send me an email my email is at the very end of the video and I'm gonna send you a box of stuff and it's gonna be cool believe me it's gonna be so cool I'm gonna hate myself for giving it to you now let's go to work don't forget to give me that like yeah that's it all right, guys, this guitar is coming together. Uh, I got the tailpiece done the last episode. Um, about ready to do the wiring stuff. Got all the neck match booked and the fret markers put in the side. But now, hey, Kendall, yeah. Hey, shout out to Union Missionary Baptist Church, Ridgecrest, California. That's where Reuben Lacey was a pastor. Been there. This is what you use to keep cool in the summertime up there. It's hot in Ridgecrest. Anyway, let's get the camera set up where we can take a look at what we're doing. And that's the nut right here. Okay, guys. So we're going to be talking about the nut here. And first thing I want to tell you is we've I've used a lot of different things for nuts and a lot of different configurations. Another piece up here with a slot in it. Use these uh, lampshade hardware 
acorn nuts with a bolt and put them up here like that. You see me use a piece of wood that slotted again down into a piece that's still up here. And I started going to these bone nuts. I like them. Um, buy them in, in bulk. Don't just try to buy one or two because they get pretty expensive. But the thing about them is they're never cut to the right size and it would be hard for them to figure out because they don't know what you're going to do when you build one of these things. So the first thing we got to do is make sure. Now I've done an episode about nuts and I'll give you a link right up there right about now. The first thing you want to do is make sure that this is nice and flat. You don't want this being all crooked because then the nut starts moving around and stuff. But we don't want this paper on here. I put this graphic on the headstock. So I'm going to take the nut and I'm just going to go like that, right? Draw a line. And then I can take a razor knife or a, a tool of some type or another. Like this gadget right here. And hold that there and get my fingers out of the way. Remember, I swear if I name this episode, keep your fingers on, I swear I'm going to end up cutting them off. And I don't want to do that. So I use the width of that. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this off of here. And make sure there's no glue and stuff. Like so. There we go. Pretty much. I'm taking two minutes to do something that should have took two seconds but that's why my videos are so long people I keep you I keep you entertained and out of the barrel house now a couple things going on here this is way too long you can see that there see that so I'm gonna hold it to the edge I'll make a line over here like so I got a line right there you see that all right again now that that paper is gone we got our line done we want to make sure that everything here is nice and smooth so this nut sits up against there. We've got the length of it measured. Now I have to take my production team and flip the gar guitar around. The production team is me by the way. And even Kendra bailed on me today. Um, and so I'm going to flip this around because we need to be looking at it from this way. Now bear with me. Okay, you saw me just a minute ago put that up to the side right there. Make sure it's flush on that side. Put a little mark right there so I'm gonna have to cut this much off again I can do that with a flat saw or something like that but bone stinks and it's gonna take a while to get through the next thing I got to figure out is that is way too tall how much too tall you know these carpenter pencils that they have they got their own special sharpener by the way it looks like that glad I could help anyway you sh sharpen it with that sharpener and then you take it to your belt sander and get a nice chisel point on there. Your frets are already on. You just lay this flat across your frets. Okay. And you just go like this. And it's going to give you a line like so. Now, if I'm going to be going to a, a scroll saw or a band saw I'm gonna be going like this and trying to run I'm gonna end up with some fingers missing or tips or something like that so now is the point of the episode I'm gonna give you a quick little uh, tip on how to build a jig that makes this really easy to do so let's get the parts together hey check it out uh, this guitar makes an awesome workbench for this part right here plus you get to google on my work and covet it so now I got this piece of wood, probably got it from a broken down shelf off of a permanent yard sale or something like that. But anyway, I've marked about five inches. Yeah, you like that metricator, huh? I marked that about right there like so. And then I come over another, I better measure this so nobody thinks I'm lying with my fancy tape measure like that. Got another three inches over here. I'm going to make another line like this. See that? Now I'm going to take this nut. I'm going to set it up there. I'll make a line about as long as that is. And about twice as wide. I'm going to put a mark there like that. I'm going to take my square. And I'm going to want to know where those lines intersect. Right there. Okay, 
All right, now I'm going to take this to the chop, so I'm going to cut here and here, and then I'm going to notch this out. All right, so I ended up with this. Now I'm going to go over to my bandsaw, and I'm going to cut this out, and I'll be right back. Okay, check it out. This is what we got. We got this piece and this piece with a notch on it. Now, I made sure when I cut this on the bandsaw that I have, I made the line disappear. Now I'm going to file this and make sure it's nice and flat. It's real important that this is completely flat. And you should be able to stick a square in there to make sure it's flat. But you need this to be very straight and flat. All right, guys, uh, we're over here with our two pieces of wood and our knot, and um, I want to show you this. This adjusts up and down here. When you're running one of these, whether it's a scroll saw or a, a bandsaw, you want this down where it's just over your work. You want to be able to see, but can you see the problem here? I need to cut that off straight right there, and if I'm going to be over here like this and, and have my fingers in it, that's a recipe for disaster. I want you to know that I've got one of those sewing machine pedals I've told you about over here that this won't come on unless I'm standing on the pedal. I was getting the habit of turning your switch on and off and then uh, the sewing machine pedal is great. But I still don't want to be doing this. So I can take my flat piece of wood here like this. You see what I'm saying? And line this up and I can just push this through like so, my finger over here is way away from here, and I can just line this up and cut it like so. There we go. Now I can do a little bit of filing here, but now is the tricky part. You see that line right there? I've got to cut that. And this is where you start doing this kind of stuff. You're going to end up missing fingers. So let me show you a trick. Remember, we got this rectangular shaped one. It's about three inches long. This one is five inches long with the corner cut out. Now, I didn't invent the Rubik's Cube or anything, so don't get too impressed. But that line right there has to be cut. And that's very thin. It's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put that in here. Like so, you see how it fits down into that corner like that. And then, I'm going to take this other piece, and I'm going to push over here. You see how that works? Everything is tight. I put the line right on my bandsaw. I squeeze everything together. My fingers are out of the way. I hit the gas pedal. Look at that, I cut that much off. There is my nut, and yeah, I got all 10. Mission accomplished. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is round off this edge. I don't want the strings coming over it and having it being real sharp right there. So I'm gonna take this vice grips, clamp it about right there, and then I'm gonna take it on the belt sander on this curved part and round this face off so let me start the camera up turn the volume down and show you what, how to do this all right there we go that's rounded off good there's nothing sharp Pencil marks have all disappeared here, so it's just the right size to go on the neck. Now it's a little bit tall, but of course I got to file down, and uh, once it's glued on, I'll have a little bit of room to work with there. Don't cut it too short because you can't put it back on. You don't want to be doing bone grafts for a cigar box guitar now, do you? All right, we want to make sure we do one little last file, get everything off of there, hang my file back up. Now, when I put this on, I want to make sure I know where the part was that I ground down to make nice and smooth. And that's on this side. Put that towards the tuners. And then I'm going to give you a secret. I use 
Gorilla Glue, Glue Super Gel, Super Glue, the gel form. I'm just going to put that on there and do this only one time again. Make sure that that curve part that we did on the belt sander is pointed that way. Now, I don't want to get my fingers in here because. I swear something's out to get my fingers, so I'm going to line that up, take a couple of these clamps here, and I'm going to push, make sure that they're pushing that nut against the, the end of my fingerboard. Now, remember this handy little gadget, my template tells me where my strings go, well, It'll also tell me my string spacing on the knot. So while I'm waiting for glue to dry, I'm just going to mark that off. And that's ultimately where I'll file. And I'm going to end this episode on the bench right here, waiting for glue to dry. All right, check it out. I still got all 10. Four, eight, nine, 10. Yeah, 10. Look, and I still got my piece of oil filled spinning chain, so I'm coming out of this good. I hope you learned something. Uh, yeah, there ain't no worm here, uh, but don't be a worm and forget about what I told you about Tim Lohman, low volts. Oh my stars. Oh my stars. Uh, look, it's signed. Who knows what will happen to this? Especially, remember I told you, first one of you. In the continental United States that emails me the first name, the nickname, and the last name of the pioneer slide player, blues player, that used a royal crown bottleneck is going to get an awesome, awesome prize. So, it pays to watch my episodes, especially all the way to the end. Okay, I got things to do. I'll see you next time.